What's up everyone? Long time no see. I'm gonna have to replace this first company coil today. It's a little slant coil. We uh, it's, it's been a repeat offender. Like we'll charge it with refrigerant and then four months later it'll be empty again and we've brought out the sniffer, the you know Freon refrigerant leak detector and it rang off heavy. Heavy in two spots. You can kind of see the oil right there, that dark on the end over there. Right along here, that's oil. It was, the sniffer rang off there and over here, so it's two big spots. So I'm gonna have to take this coil out and replace it. Got all my stuff here, got the torches. There's my new coil. I won't be showing the whole process because due to battery on my camera and just the length of the video, but you know who has great videos? Who records every every move? If you want to study this guy, Walt over at WWHVAC. Search him, man. He is awesome. So I'm going to pump the system down. I'm going to put all the refrigerant out into the condenser first. And take the caps off your service valves. Again, I won't go through the whole process, but if you want to see the whole process, Walt over at WWHVAC, he has fantastic HVAC videos. I love studying that guy. And he lets it roll too, like an hour long. It's great. So you get your, uh, your pump down wrench here. I'll leave tools, I'll always leave the tools that I use in the video description below, the link so you can go get them. So the refrigerant for you new guys flows this way and then comes out the little liquid line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trap all the refrigerant into the condenser by closing this all the way. I'm gonna close this up. Then I'm gonna turn the unit on. And all the refrigerant's gonna be able to flow in but not out. So there will be no refrigerant in the line set up to the coil. Now if you had to do anything inside the condenser, you would have to recover. And some people don't like that I pump pump it down when I do the coil but guys I've got units I did the same way seven years ago at my older property they're still going strong and they're good ones so that says a lot all right that's closed nice and snug do the same over here but I don't close it all the way I just leave it a skeeter leg open all right now that I got the suction line service valve closed all the way I'm gonna Open it up just a little bit, just a skeeter leg, about 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 11, 12, we'll go 12. So that way the refrigerant can still go in, but it won't be able to come out. Again, I won't show the whole process, but I mean, guys, like I say about swimming, you can watch all the videos about swimming, read all the books about swimming. You're not really going to know until you dive in. So. Just dive in. That's how I learned watching you know YouTube videos, kind of getting an idea on how to do it, and then diving in. Then you'll find your find your system. All right, I'm gonna hook up the gauges and pump it down now. All right, got the gauges hooked up. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much for the new guys when this gets all the way almost to zero, I'm gonna start cranking that down to close it. Then I'm gonna let go of the uh, contactor. It's got a low pressure switch in, so I push the contactor in with my screwdriver here. So. Here we go. Ready for the pump down. Gonna need two hands, but you get the idea. When this baby gets close to zero, I'm gonna wrench that down. I gotta use my film hand. Just all the refrigerant is going in, into the condenser. Moving on down. All right, I'm about to start closing that off. I need my film hand to do it, but there we go. That's how you pump it down. All right, there we go. That's pretty much zero. You can let a little bit of excess out. It's not enough to worry about, but all the refrigerant, refrigerant now is in here. So now I can go do the coil. The line set all the way up to the coil is empty. All right, we got all the screws out of the cover. 
to sweat this one off, man, and it is tight. Look at how tight that is. Somebody already got the, the insulation on the side there, so. What I do is I get a squirt bottle and I wet the crap out of it. Look, somebody burned it there. Must have been the installers. I gotta take that transformer off right there and move it over so I don't burn it. And oh, somebody already melted the grommet. I get those grommets out of there as well. See how it's melted though? Somebody's already done it for me. But look how tight that is. I mean, how are you gonna get your pipe cutter in there? You can't get your pipe cutter in here and turn it. It's not gonna happen, so we gotta sweat it out with the torch. <sighs> okay, let's see. I mean, don't you love those YouTube tutorials? I mean, I like them. I like watching them, but you know how the guy brazing has like a th you know wide 360 move movement around the pipe. Well, this is real life. Here's brazing in real life. I have to get this door switch out of the way. I'm not a fan of these. I've already had a couple of these go bad. I guess it's for the hot water hydronic heating. I've seen them on gas stuff. I understand gas, but I don't know. Not a fan. So I got to get that out of the way so I don't burn it. And got to get this low voltage down. I kind of like that they put the holes over here because you can put your brazing rod through there and get the back. Otherwise, man, I mean, you're going to be burning insulation. All right, now I'm going to get this transformer out of the way. Turn the breaker off. All right, Skid, we're about ready to get it out. It's the doggone prepping that takes so long. It's not the getting the coil out, it's the doggone prepping. So I had to take this off to kind of get the low voltage up and out of the way because it was going across here. That's where I'm going to have to sweat it off. There's the TXV. We'll pull that bulb off. The TXV bulb. And I had to remove the, where is it, the high voltage out of there. The white and the black wire. I had to get that out. The transformer's wedged up in there. I had to remove that off. So it's the prepping that takes a while. But we're almost there. They got the bulb on with a with a doggone star star bit. <clears throat> At least the equalization tube is a, you know bolt on, not one of those little pain in the booty things you gotta braze in. So that's a plus. And I also like to take this off because you can bring the brazing rod through the side here and get the back right there when you're brazing. Goes right to the back. So just a little little tech tip. All right, the TXV bulb is out. There's nothing wrong with the TXV, but I don't save them. I don't plan on reusing them, but what say you guys in the comment section? Would you save the TXV? I mean, the coil is leaking. There's nothing wrong with the TXV. I'm curious to know what you guys think or what you guys do. Do you save the old TXV? Would you install an old TXV? Because the new coil comes with a new one on it, so that's what I just I just put the put the new one in. Now we got to get this tray up out of here. On board. This just comes on out. All right, we'll unbolt the equalizing tube. And we'll do the same with the TXV. Just get you some channel locks, hold that, and then boop with the old crescent wrench. It'll unbolt right off. Then I'll sweat it out from up here. Again, you can't get your pipe, your pipe cutters in here. You know, maybe some super techs out there like, oh, I'd cut it out. Oh, would you? Okay. All right. I just ain't got it in me to use an old TXV, big dog. I mean, maybe if it was an emergency kind of deal. But saving it and putting it on a, a new coil or something, or doing it as a repair, well, I don't know. What say you guys? Give me, maybe if you guys can convince me. Grommet, the old melted grommet up there from the last guy. 
Usually I can scoot this up and out, get it up out of the way. Cause I'm gonna have to do that with the new one. So the torch doesn't cook the new TXV. All right, now we're all disconnected. Now all we gotta do is torch this baby. I, I soak all of this with water. I mean, as you can see, someone's already it's already done in by the last guy. Thank you, whoever did it. So now I don't have to worry about burning. But we're gonna need to flow some nitrogen first so I don't get a ticket from the YouTube police. Go ahead and sand these babies up. I like to see it and you can see the, the solder melt easier. Do both. All right, now we can go flow some nitch. I'm gonna throw a cap on here with that, that doesn't have the gasket in there. That way the nitrogen doesn't just flow out that hole there. It doesn't have to go on super tight or anything. Just don't want the nitch going out the hole. Cause we don't want any oxygen in the line set when we're got the torch going. We don't want to create any oxidation. All right, this is my little flow indicator. Hey YouTube police, this one's for you. Just a little ball comes up, just a skeeter leg, not too much. It says it right here. Braze. Right there. So you want it in that red zone. So it's coming out my blue hose, filling up the big line, then well it's coming out the bottom of the TXV right now, actually, because I got it unhooked. That's why I come back down when I unsweat the TXV and reverse. I'll put the red on. But uh, again, find your own system. What works for me may not work for you. But we got nitrogen flowing, YouTube, please, okay? So uh, no tickets today, big dog. All right, now I wet all this. All this insulation on the side. Guys, I don't go for beauty points, okay? When it's, when it's this tight, and this close, I gotta bring out fire and a torch this close. I don't go for beauty points, so. That's what I recommend to you. This isn't a YouTube tutorial where you got 360 degrees all the way around the pipe. I enjoy watching them though. They give you a good idea and all that. But this right here is reality. Tight, burning stuff. All right, dudes, I apologize for the dog. There's a dog in here, he's barking. Uh, this is my wife's oven mitt. This is my wife's oven mitt, by the way. She's been looking for this for about three years. Every time she bakes, she's cussing about, where is my freaking oven mitt? So she's only had one for this whole time. So what we're gonna do is just gonna put the torch on this braze here and sweat it off. Fire in the hole. First, the nitrogen to get this uh, TXV out so the nitrogen will be coming up the little liquid line and out the TXV so I can sweat it off up here. I just, I disconnect it just because it's easier. Again, you'll find your own system. What well, works for me, what I like to do may not work for you. I just don't like to leave it connected because it's all in the way. You know, it might melt something, torch is going. But once you get it, all you gotta do is pull the coil out. I love these coils now. The good ones are glued in. That's it, baby. Oh, it's a boy. Congratulations. Congratulations, it's a boy. All right, now we gotta get that egg salad out of there. The nitrogen is flowing through the TXB now, down underneath the braise. 
Let's get that egg salad out of there. Egg salad is out. I say again, would you save it? There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I didn't wrap a rag around it because I, I get rid of them, but what do you guys do? What do you pros do? Should I keep it and use it <clears throat> or trash it? Now I'm just gonna sand up a little bit, clean all that up, hit, it, hit this with some sandpaper, get ready for the new one. All right, got the new one out. Comes with TXV tape. Like that court tape comes with a new TXV. So we want to make sure it's good and that it's holding the nitrogen in it. If this doesn't hiss, then uh oh. All right, we're good. So you want to let it all out. That didn't hiss, it means the thing is leaking. These coils cost $1,000. $600. But I was told that they're in the warranty, so that's good. Yeah, make sure you wear gloves when you handle these things. They'll cut you long and deep. So I'm going to pull the TXV off. I cut these ends off. Uh, Schrader, Schrader valve there. Cut it off with my pipe cutter. This has a cap on it. Just take my pipe cutter and roll it around, but I'm going to pull the TXV off and I got to transfer the sides. These just unscrew off, screw here, screw down here, and this screws on. So all you do is just pull this off, put it on the left side of that one, pull this off, two screws, put it on the right side of the, of the new coil. That's all there is to that. It's just where the filter slides in. This is the filter rail. Gotta take it off the old and put it on the new one. Unbolt the TXV, get it up out of the way. There we go. I swedged that with my spin swagers. Love this tool, man. Again, I'll leave all tools, tool links where you can get them in the video description below. You can order it and have it delivered to your house. I'll just put it in my drill. That's what it looks like. Just put it in the hole. And swedge it out for you. It doesn't put any metal shavings in the pipe or nothing like that. I get a lot of comments about it. I've had good experiences with it. Again, I've done it this way for Going on eight years now, and they're still kicking over at the old place. I still walk by them every now and then. That's how I know. Don't forget your little washer gasket here. Try not to melt it. If you want to, if you want to leave it in there, go ahead. But just try not to hit it with the torch when you're brazing this up. I got to cut this cap off and then swedge it out. All right, three quarter swedge here. I wear my wife's oven mitten from Publix, the grocery store, uh, because the pipe gets hot. Here we go. That's it, it is swaged out. Nice and clean. All right, I got the filter rail on my new one. All the goodies are on it. Again, it's just two screws here, here, then it pops off the side. You got the bottom here, two screws. The problem is they just sit in water and they rust. That's what the problem is. That's where all the leaks are down on that bottom left corner so far. I'll show you the old one. Right down on the bottom left where it's all rusty. I mean, these are only two years old. This one was leaking over here too. You can see all the dark oil right there. These things just sit in the drain pan and rust. I mean, two years old, that's looking pretty, pretty rough, big dog. You'd have to double bag this one. 
She's ugly. Pretty much just needs a good wiping. So I'm gonna give it a good wiping. All right, Skid, got the new one in. It goes in really easy. Just pretty much drop it in, slides in. Got my three quarter pipe ready for braze. And I'll do that first and then I'll put the TXV on. Got it back there just so I don't cook it because the flame will be shooting back here. I don't want it, I don't want it, the TXV getting hit. All right, I got the three quarter inch line brazed in. I had to wedge it, man. This thing kept, kept slipping as the uh, solder would soften. It would come out of the pipe. So I had to throw my comb down there and wedge it with my pliers. Ugh, but I got it. So now I'm gonna do the TXV, braze it in up here. Got it bolted on. You wanna keep it cool though. So I got some of this cool gel. I'm also gonna wrap it in a wet rag. I've used some of that wet rag stuff that comes in a can. I like it, it was pretty cool, but a little messy, man. It's hard to get out of all the TXV stuff. Ah, this camera's having a hard time focusing. So I'm gonna hit it with some cool gel and then wrap it with a wet rag and braise that up. And then pressure test with nitrogen. Got a little buggery, but hey, when it's tight, I don't go for beauty points. I don't try to be perfect. Just make sure it don't leak. That's what I'm here for. All right, that looks good. Corner looks good. Oh, the mirror is fogging up. Oh, we got action. Let's bolt the old equalizing tube on. Just be careful not to kink it. Yeah, don't kink this stuff. This is the TXB bulb. We'll put that on here after we pressure test. Just make sure none of this is leaking. <clears throat> There's my 3 8 line braze for all the super techs like to pick me apart. You got a little boogery here, but I don't try to be perfect when it's all tight. Insulation's all burning, smoke alarms going off, dogs barking. <clears throat> but hey, that'll work. As long as it don't leak. All right, Skid, now I got the big nitrogen tank hooked up. I'll try to get it to 200 PSI. And make sure it holds. I'll let it hold for about 20 mins. All right, there will work. 200. If that needle starts falling rapidly, don't panic. You got a leak, but don't panic. Just release the nitrogen. You can release it into the atmosphere. A lot of guys ask me that. What do you got to do with the nitrogen? You can just release it. That's legal. Release the nitrogen and go fix the leak. It happens from time to time. So I'm going to let this sit for 20 minutes at around 200 PSI. Well, I don't hear anything hissing. That's a good sign. From time to time I do. I still make mistakes. I mess up so what what are they gonna do ask me not to do coils anymore oh okay my pleasure so I'm just gonna hit it with bubbles make sure nothing's bubbling check behind the braze with my mirror if I don't see any bubbles no bubbles no troubles just 
just while the nitrogen's holding for 20 minutes. Then I'll pull a vacuum and go eat my butt hair sandwich. We'll vacuum it down to 300 microns. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna get my mirror and check behind the braze. Make sure there's no troubles. All right, we're a little over 20 minutes and it is still holding at 200 PSI. No hissing, no bubbles, so I feel pretty confident to release. I hook up the testos to pull a vacuum because it's got the micron gauge and all that. Nothing fancy, just an old maintenance man. Maintenance man, get up. All right, Brosaline, got the old testos hooked up. Got it hooked up to the vacuum, hoses, Everything's open. All I gotta do is turn it on. I like to put some of this nylog around the threads, the service valve threads. Put them around there and put the caps on just for a little extra, extra suction, a little extra protection. Put them around these threads, the gauge threads, and that those threads. Again, nylog. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, I think I'm hooked up. Fire in the hole. Three hundred Mickeys, here I come. That's three hundred microns to all you new guys. And these testos, I hook up the micron gauge here, where the yellow hose goes. And it plugs in up here. It works for me. It's my system. Again, you know, once you get out here and get the get the go on, you'll find your own system. not perfect. No, the compressor's going to die in 15 years. It's not perfect. Oh, okay. Coming on down. I forgot to mention, y'all remember that compressor that died on the last video I did? Well, I replaced it. It was a rush job because the compressor, they're all like on back order. Things are hard to get. And it, the compressor came in the day before their people were moving in. So it was kind of a rush job. I couldn't film it, but man, I was blowing the, the lines out with nitrogen after I took the old compressor out and chunks of metal were flying out dude it was crazy I'm like no freaking way I guess the compressor like exploded inside or something but it was a rush job because uh, it was on back order like we couldn't get it so they came in the day before and the people were moving in I'm gonna go put the air handler back together let this come on down Come on down to 300 Mickeys. All right, bro, I got the TXV sensing bulb on. Nice and tight. Got the little voltage back in. Got the transformer bolted back on. Door switch. Hooked up the power. I had to remove all that because the torch was blowing around in here. Didn't want to burn any wires. And this is the tape that goes around the TXV. Cork tape, insulation, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna put it around here, seal it up, and we will go check the vacuum. Should be getting close to 300 microns. Again, if you wanna see like long videos, like right down to the bolt, just compressor change outs, coils, check out WWHVAC. Man, Walt has a fantastic channel. I love studying that guy's channel. He's got over hour long videos. I mean, he takes you all the way through the filter dryer. He just does everything right there on camera. I know I pieced, uh, you know, kind of pieced it together just for the my camera battery sake and video length. But I am going to put this around the TXV, and I'll be back. All right, got the TXV sensing bulb wrapped up. You have to do this. You got to keep it nice and insulated so that it fluctuates the superheat. It's kind of tight. I couldn't get the tape around good, so it ripped apart on me. I'm still not a big fan of this first company mess. I mean, this is really tight. It's hard to work, but. Got to do what I got to do. Just don't worry about it being perfect. And if you're a crappy brazer, you can wrap a little tape around your brace so nobody can see it. All right, skid bros. We're all buttoned up. Got the new filter in. Still pulling a vacuum. Whew. These things are time consuming. Probably won't be filming anymore, but this is what it's going to look like over and over and over because they're all the same out here. I've noticed they're all the 32U 
CX QBR, that model. I think the one, one bedrooms are 19, but pretty much the same deal. And I'll leave some uh, Goodman coil videos when I replace the Goodman heat pump coils over at the last property. I'll leave links to those videos in case you want to check them out. The coil replacement videos aren't my biggest videos. And it's real time consuming, guys, so might not be filming anymore. But this is it. Still pulling a vacuum. Let me go check, see where it's at. All right, 284 microns. I like it. I'm going to call it. I'm going to go ahead and release the refrigerant. I'd love to sit here and nerd out and all that stuff, like turn it off and, you know, all that other stuff. Put it in nitrogen, vacuum it back down. This is apartment maintenance. You got to do the best you can and keep going. I got dishwashers to install. Things, other things to go do. All right, big dog, you leave it in a vacuum. You don't break vacuum. I took the service valve caps back off and we're gonna release the refrigerant. Remember, we put the refrigerant in the condensing unit. So we're gonna just undo the little liquid line and bring it back to positive pressure. Going back to positive pressure. This is a uh, pretty new refrigerant as well. It got charged on Friday, so this is virgin refrigerant pretty much. It was low. Somebody came and charged it up. So that's why I also chose to pump it down because everything's hard to get right now. Down to one can of refrigerant. So I went the old pump down route. And if you want to recover, you can. You can do that. Again, get out here, jump in the pool with us and find your system. Don't try to be perfect. I just do the best I can. I got other things to go do too, you know. This is apartment maintenance, man. I'm not a HVAC guy where I get all the time in the world and can nerd out and you know fill it back up with nitrogen and vacuum it back down and you know how you know there's really thorough ways of doing things but gotta keep it moving here man so we're back up to positive pressure so it shouldn't be that low since they got charged on Friday all right, got the old thermostat on, 78 in here, got it to 74. Inside's running, let's go check out the outside. I'll let it run for about 15 minutes, let it equalize. The old camera battery's dying. That's why I can only get pieces, give y'all the cliff notes. All right, the outside's running. Moving some good heat out the top. I'm gonna let it run for a little while. It's a TXV, so you gotta charge by subcool. And the subcool is 2.6. I'm gonna let it run a while, let it equalize. Superheat is 26.7. If it was a piston, new guys, you would charge by superheat. But we got a TXV in this one. So we got to charge by subcool. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. It's kind of cool out today. Mid 70s, it's like 75 ish. But. I gotta get that sub cool up. I'll give it a squirt. All right, that super heat's still low, so we're gonna give it some juice. Let me purge my line here. Got my tank hooked up. Get the old air out of there. You don't want air getting in your new coil, big dog. And give it a little popping. Don't want to overshoot. Little at a time. All right, 12 degrees sub cool. I'm gonna leave it right there. So I'm not taking any serious calculations right now. I just this is better than holding my hand up there. I mean, I know it's probably not blowing out at 48 degrees, but it feels nice and cold. I'm not taking any serious calculations, Super Tech. Settle down. This is better than holding my hand up there. 47, 48. Yeah, they're gonna be good. They're gonna be good. 
came down a degree that's good it was 78 came down to 77 that's good all right i think we're going to be good to go again if you guys want like the hour-long play-by-play -play videos check out wwhvac or walt man he's got a fantastic channel i love studying his stuff and uh ooh, this is time consuming my battery's almost dead so won't be doing any more coil videos probably because I mean, it's all cookie cutter. They're all the same one. It'll look just like this one. So and that's it. Just wanted to show you that I do them. Like, subscribe, share. Let's get this thing to 50,000. See you on the next one. Later.